welcome to appreciating drama this is the second lesson on uh, drama which deals with greek theater uh, as we have already seen uh, drama actually started out in greece so it has its uh, origin in greece so now we are going to see the greek theater uh this is actually the amphitheater where the plays were enacted so you find that the structure of the uh, amphitheater it is the open air theater where you find the spectators uh, gallery and below that you have the uh, stage on which the uh, play was enacted and you find that even today uh, in the the theaters are mostly modeled after this amphitheater greek theater and drama greek theater began in the 6th century bce in athens with the performance of tragedy plays at religious festivals so it was a tragedy that was the first form of uh, drama and uh, this drama was definitely related to uh, religious festivals these in turn inspired the genre called uh, greek comedy plays so after tragedy comes uh, comedy the two types of greek drama would be hugely popular and performances spread around the mediterranean uh, that means uh, it's a convergence of europe africa and asia which is actually the historical cradle of modern civilization so it is from the mediterranean region that modern civilization started out and of course it uh, influenced uh, the hellenistic and roman theater a uh, hellenistic uh, era is actually between 336 bc to 30 bc uh, definitely it is a uh, greek and roman theater between 240 bc to uh, 345 ad as a consequence of their lasting popularity the works of such great playwrights as Sophocles, Euripides and Aristophanes formed the foundation upon which all modern theatre is based. So we have uh, three great playwrights of that time. Um, they are actually the uh, founders of uh, uh, theatre we can say. And these three people's uh, images are given there. You can see the three of them. the great legends who were instrumental in uh, in the origin of uh, drama in a similar way the architecture of the ancient greek theater has continued to inspire the design of theaters today so the same structure is followed even today after you know around 2600 years have passed by but still the structure of theaters Uh, is the same the exact origins of tragedy are debated among scholars so there is no 100% accuracy with regard to the origin how it uh, originated uh, there are only some assumptions uh, we are not certain about all that somehow link the rise of the genre to an earlier art form that is the lyrical performance of epic poetry you know that uh, all the great epics were written in poetry like homer's iliad or odyssey and uh, when we come to india we know that uh, the mahabharata was actually written in poetry uh, sanskrit others suggest a long uh, sorry 
a strong link with the rituals performed in the worship of Dionysus, such as the sacrifice of gods, a song ritual called Tragodia, and the wearing of masks. So another theory uh, that is very predominant is that uh, it is closely related to the religious rituals of uh, the god of Dionysus. And during the uh, festivals of this uh, god, they used to wear masks and all that. Indeed, Dionysus became the uh, became known as the god of theatre, and perhaps there is another connection: the drinking rites, which uh, resulted in the worshippers losing full control of their emotions and in effect becoming another person, much as actors or uh, hypocriti. See the English term hypocrite is uh, from that word. Uh, actually, the meaning of hypocrite is a person who puts on a false appearance. That means he is acting as somebody else, not his real self. Uh, so, these actors uh, actually when they are on stage, uh, they are almost like the drunkards of that time of during the festival of this particular uh, god. At that time, they used to have uh, you know a lot of drinking and uh, uh, we know that uh, when <coughs> people usually when they drink and then get intoxicated, you now they uh, become a different person. Uh, so acting is almost like that. The moment they are on stage, uh, they uh, become another person, just like the drunkards. The music and dance of Dionysiac rituals was most evident in the role of the chorus and the music provided by an aulus player. But rhythmic elements were also preserved in the use of first trochaic tetrameter and also then uh, iambic trimeter in the delivery of the spoken words. So you have uh, two, three difficult terms coming there. I uh, will try to explain that. So during this uh, religious festival in honor of uh, uh, Dionysus the god, uh, they used to play music and all that. So the, there was a chorus and then uh, a music instrument was played. Uh, interestingly, the name of that instrument is Aulus, not our Malayalam uh, Aulus. You know, we have got Aulus Pudi and Aulus Unda, but it has nothing to do with that. So, uh, this music had a kind of a meter. We know that uh, in poetry and all that, they are supposed to follow a certain uh, meter. Of course, nowadays we don't uh, bother about meter. But otherwise, you know, the the way they use the words, rhyming words and all that, or the stress on a particular syllable, that is actually meant by <coughs> trochaic uh, tetrameter, where you have uh, four uh, trochies. Trochi means a long syllable followed by a short syllable. And then iambic trimeter, we have got three stressed syllable per every line. So they used to follow this kind of rules for uh, poetry especially in music. Plays were performed in an open air theatre. Uh, the Greek word for that is uh, theatron with wonderful acoustics. Uh, you know the meaning of acoustic is uh, the way in which the structure of a building or room affects the qualities of musical or spoken sound. So, those days it was all uh, open air uh, theatre, uh, the amphitheatre you have already seen the structure, but still they gave lot of importance to uh, sound effect, that is actually the meaning of acoustics. So we know that when we are building a, a theatre or a uh, hall, they have to pay attention to this sound effect, you know when we play music or when some uh, function is going on. There should not be any echo in the building. 
so now it is of course we have got uh, very sophisticated technology but those days uh, it was not available but still uh, they took a lot of uh, care uh, with regard to uh, sound effect and seemingly open, open to all of the male populace that means uh, mostly it was only the male audience who were there uh, we are not sure whether uh, women were present or not there is an element of uh, doubt there from the mid 5th century bc entrance was free that means till then the people had to uh, pay uh, uh, fees for that uh, they had to take ticket and all that. the plot of tragedy was uh, almost always inspired by episodes from greek mythology which we must remember were often a part of greek religion so earlier plays were based on greek uh, mythology and uh, greek mythology just like our uh, indian mythology it was part of a religion as a consequence of this serious subject matter which often dealt with moral right and wrongs and tragic novin dilemmas violence was not permitted on stage and the death of a character had to be heard from off stage and not seen so here we know that tragedy means there uh, it is dealing with a very serious uh, subject matter and they were of course uh, about the moral right and wrong so uh, it is a very serious matter and uh, we know tragic means uh, is dealing with the uh, misfortunes of human beings where you know usually the uh, protagonist uh, is a loser at the end that's the meaning of no win dilemmas e, that means dilemma is a situation where you cannot escape so the protagonist is finding himself in a different i mean in a similar situation where he cannot win so violence was not shown on stage and uh, if somebody died they are not supposed to show that they uh, only could say that and when somebody had to announce that that a particular person has died uh, they will not show that the actual uh, event of death will not be shown on stage similarly at least in the early stages of the genre the poet means here the playwright could not make comments or political statement through his play so here the word poet is used for uh, the person who is writing drama not in the uh, other sense of the word the proper word is actually playwright so here uh, the poet or the writer could not make any political statements he had to be uh, you know rather neutral in this area due to the restricted number of actors each performer had to take on multiple roles where the use of mask costumes voice and gesture became extremely important so here we know that uh, in the beginning there were no actors it was a chorus and then uh, started with one actor then leading to two three like that so the <coughs> number of actors were very few in the beginning so they had to wear mask and then costumes voice and gestures they all became very uh, extremely important because one person had to Uh, play different roles the early tragedies had only one actor who would perform in costume and wear a mask allowing him to impersonate uh, impersonate gods so here when there is only one actor playing different uh, roles and even he had to uh, act like a god and all that i mean impersonating god that means uh men wearing the dress of god and all that gods of course greek mythology had so many gods here we can see perhaps the link to earlier religious ritual where <coughs> proceedings might have been carried out by a priest so uh it was a priest who used to uh, carry out uh, the religious uh, rituals and all that and uh, gradually you find the actor is taking the place of 
the priest later the actor would often speak to the leader of the chorus a group of up to 15 actors all male who sang and danced but did not speak so there was a kind of interaction between the actor and the chorus the chorus uh, uh, was a group of 15 actors uh, there were no uh, female uh, members of the chorus so the uh, the role of the chorus was mainly to sing and dance they were not supposed to have any dialogue and all that this innovation is credited to thespis around 520 bc and uh, from his name only comes the word thespian uh, thespian means actually actor so we can say that uh, thespis was the first actor we can see a, a statue a bust of a uh, thespis the actor also changed the costumes during the performance using a small tent behind the stage the skinny so when one person is uh, acting different roles he had to change costumes in between so there used to be a kind of background there uh, almost like curtain uh, that's what we call is uh, called skinny uh, nowadays we call it as a green room which would later develop into a monumental uh, facade monumental means very huge or immense facade is actually the front elevation of a building and so break the play into distinct episodes or scenes so with the arrival of this uh, a facade or a kind of structure uh, they were able to uh, show different scenes that means there could be change of scene and all that later these would develop into musical interludes here interlude means interval so when the actor is uh, going uh, behind the curtain for uh, changing the mask or costume uh, the chorus would come and uh, perform uh, that is called the musical in- interlude eventually three actors were permitted on stage but no more a limitation which allowed for equality between poets in competition so later they fixed the number of actors uh, as three uh, it's kind of rule so that uh, Uh, there will be equality between the uh, playwrights playwrights here means the people who are, who are writing dramas and they had a lot of competition uh, especially uh, in the context of these uh, festivals so it is a prestigious uh, uh, competition uh, and uh, it is almost like winning an olympics medal uh, when the person is winning this competition this drama competition however a play could have as many non speaking performers as required that means actors should be only uh, two or three but there can be extras uh, actually they are not uh, actors they are kind of being passive maybe uh, not interacting with the uh, actor directly so that plays with greater financial backing could put on a more spectacular production that means if you have a lot of money you can uh, involve many people performers who are actually not having any dialogues and all that just like the extras uh, in movies uh, we have today uh, especially for dancing and all that due to the restricted number of actors then each performer had to take on multiple roles where the use of mask costumes voice and gesture became extremely important yes that we have already seen when part, uh, one person is uh, acting different roles uh, the importance of masks costumes and all that comes into play competition and celebrated playwrights the most famous competition for the performance of tragedy was as part of the spring festival of 
Dionysus Eleutherius or the city of uh, city Dionysia in Athens. So uh, when there was the festival of this particular god, uh, this festival is known as Dionysus Eleutherius or the city Dionysia in Athens. So Athens was the center of you know all festivals and drama competition. And we know all that uh, even <coughs> Olympics had uh, origin there in Greece. The Archon, a high ranking official of the city decided which place would be performed in competition and which citizen would act as a choragoi or sponsor and how the honor of funding their production while the state paid the poet and lead actors. So there is a kind of official there, high ranking official, his name was Arkan and he is the one who decided which are the plays going to be performed for the competition and even the people who are uh, taking part, uh, the actors and all that. And of course, uh, the government funded uh, the uh, people who are involved in the drama. Each selected poet would submit three tragedies and one uh, satyr play, a type of short parody performance on a theme from mythology with a chorus of satyrs, uh, the wild followers of Dionysus. So, uh, the, here the poet means the playwright, he, he could uh, submit three tragedies and uh, one satyr play. Satyr is actually uh, a wild uh, follower of this particular god Dionysus. Actually, the satyr looks like a, a kind of animal uh, human. He was half, uh, I mean, his uh, feet were out of horse, his body was uh, a human, and he had the ears of uh, ears and ears of horse and the horns of a god. So, uh, it looked a very peculiar creature, the satyr. The plays were judged on the day by a panel and the prize for the winner of such competitions besides honor and prestige was often a bronze tripod cauldron. So the winner of the drama competition would be given a tripod cauldron. You can see in the picture there. Uh, it was almost like a kind of pan. Uh, for cooking, but it was made of bronze. Uh, of course, it was. Uh, oh, it must have been very, very costly. You know that uh, in the beginning, for Olympics and all that, they were given uh, olive leaves as a crown. Uh, that was a uh, price. From 449 BC, there are also prices for the leading actors or protagonists. So first of all, uh, uh, the beginning we had uh, only uh, prize for uh, uh, the playwright, the winner of the competition, but later there are also prizes given for uh, best actors and all that. Playwrights who regularly wrote plays in competition became famous and the three most successful were uh, Aeschylus, Sophocles and Euripides. So these were the three great playwrights uh, who used to uh, win plays and all that, win the competition. Aeschylus was known for his innovation, adding a second actor and uh, more dialogue and even creating sequels. Uh, so the contribution of Aeschylus was that he added a second actor and also more dialogue and even he created sequels. I hope you know what is mean sequels. Like uh, we have got series like uh, one uh, movie comes out and then we have a sequel like one, two and all that. Like we had uh, uh, Drishyam, Drishyam one, then Drishyam two and all that. He described his work as morsels from the feast of Homer. 
Yeah, morsel means uh, food. So why did he say that his work or his dramas were morsels from the feast of Homer? You know, Homer is a great uh, uh, epic writer. His uh, great works are Iliad and uh, Odyssey, epic poems. Uh, uh, what he meant was that he based most of his uh, dramas on Homer's uh, epics, epic poems. Sophocles was extremely popular and added a third act to the performance as well as uh, painted scenery. So the contribution of uh, Sophocles was that he added a third actor and then he also uh, started with the painted scenery that is uh, background. Euripides was celebrated for his clever dialogues, realism and habit of posing awkward questions to the audience with his thought-provoking treatment of common themes. So here you find uh, Euripides uh, uh, coming back to the earth from mythologies and epics and all that. He's, he started uh, uh, dealing with uh, common themes, uh, common topics uh, related to you know, everyday life. And uh, uh, he had also clever dialogues and uh, realism here means the stories were based on real human experience or human uh, life. And he also used to ask very uh, tricky <coughs> or rather uh, embarrassing questions to the audience which are uh, thought provoking. The plays of these three were re-performed and even copied into scripts for mass publication and study as part of every child's education. Here you find the, the three uh, great playwrights becoming uh, great uh, uh, and very famous because their uh, plays were uh, uh, repeatedly performed on many stages maybe and even uh, copied to scripts. They started writing down the scripts uh, and then could be uh, published, may not be the way we publish today, you know, there were, might not have been any press and all that. So maybe it was all just manual uh, publication and it was also given as uh, study material for students. So you can imagine uh, how much importance was given to uh, their place. Now we come to Greek comedy, how the comedy originated in Greek uh, drama. The precise origins of Greek comedy plays are lost in the midst of prehistory. So again there is an element of uh, uncertainty with regard to the origin of Greek comedy. But the activity of men dressing as and mimicking others must surely go back a long way before written records. That means, uh, there must have been, um, you know, performance uh, whereby people used to imitate other people, mimic uh, other people's uh, dress or their behavior or their actions, which definitely uh, evokes a lot of laughter. Today we know that uh, our uh, mimicry itself is becoming very popular. Uh, why mimicry is very popular? Because uh, mimicry is mainly uh, imitating other people's, uh, their uh, maybe their flaws, their uh, their eccentricities. Uh, there is their personal uh, uh, mode of behavior. So these are all imitated in mimicry. Uh, so maybe uh, comedy had uh, uh, its origin in that kind of mimicry. Uh, it's not just sound. I mean, they used to act out on stage. The first indications of such activity in the Greek world come from pottery, where decoration in the 6th century BC frequently represented actors dressed as horses, satyrs and dancers in exaggerated costumes. So you can see the image of pottery there. So <coughs> there were paintings on that and uh, they were actually uh, about actors dressed as horses and these satyrs and dancers and all that. 
can have the image of a satyr there. Uh, see the legs are of a horse and uh, god's horns and all that. So these kind of paintings were found on the potteries. From that we can imagine that uh, they must have been uh, actors trying to mimic uh, at least in dress and acting uh, action and all that. Another early source of comedy is the poems of uh, Archilochus who lived in the 7th century and Hipponax 6th century which contain crude and explicit sexual humor. So another origin could be from these two great writers, uh, who uh, great po poets uh, and uh, their poems contained you know a lot of crude and explicit sexual humor. Uh, explicit means direct and without hiding anything, open. A third origin and uh, cited as such by Aristotle lies in the phallic songs which were sung during Dionysiac festivals. Again we are going back to the festival of uh, this particular god named uh, Dionysus. So they used to have uh, uh, music or songs related to this particular god. Again it is related to uh, sex and uh, sexual behavior. Although innovations occurred, a comedy play followed a conventional structure. So they used to have a common structure for uh, comedy. We will see that in detail. Uh, the first part was the parados or music performance where the chorus of as many as 24 performers entered and performed a number of song and dance routines. So that was the first uh, part where uh, chorus came and started dancing and singing. Dressed to impress, their outlandish costumes could represent anything from giant bees with huge stingers to knights riding another man in imitation of a horse or even a variety of kitchen utensils. That means uh, they used to have very funny and strange costumes, dress to impress the uh, audience. And even they used to dress as kind of uh, animals like giant bees, huge bees. You can see on the pottery uh, representation there, uh, two strange creatures there, almost like bees with the wings and all that. And they used to even imitate horse and even kitchen utensils. In many cases, the play was actually named after the chorus. Example, Aristophanes, the wasps. The second phase of the show was the Argon, which was often a witty verbal contest or debate between the principal actors with the fantastical plot elements and the fast changing of scenes which may have included some improvisation. So second part of the comedy was kind of witty or funny uh, dialogue verbal contest between the main actors. and uh, even they had a change of scenes in between and also interlude included some improvisation improvisation means kind of you know making up the third part of the play was the parabasis when the chorus spoke directly to the audience and even directly spoke for the poet so the third part of the comedy was uh, when chorus was uh, speaking to the audience kind of interaction and the chorus was definitely speaking uh, for the poet, the playwright. The show stopping finale of a comedy play was the exodus when the chorus gave another rousing song and dance routine. So the final part was again uh, just like the first part, the chorus comes and then gives a song and dance routine. With that the comedy would end. 
as in tragedy plays all performers were male actors singers and dancers so there were no women uh, actors there one star performer and two other actors performed all of the speaking parts so there was a main actor and then two supporting actors on occasion actor was permitted but only if non instrumental to the plot so uh, maybe one actor was permitted but uh, he was not given any main role there uh, he was almost like a passive that I mean he did not have any uh, important role in that plot comedy plays allow allowed the playwright to address more directly events of the moment than the formal genre of tragedy so tragedy was of course dealing with a very serious topic but here uh, you find <coughs> the uh, playwright had more freedom he could deal with any topic of the uh, common man the most famous comedy playwrights were aristophanes and menander one festival competitions just like the great tragedians so here you have the picture of uh, another great man playwright uh, menander their works frequently poked fun at politicians philosophers and fellow artists some of whom were sometimes even in the audience so uh, they had the freedom to imitate or even make fun of uh, great politicians i mean the uh, maybe the rulers like kings and all that uh, philosophers and also fellow artists and some of them would have been there in the audience so that is part of their uh, comedy menander was also credited with helping to create a different version of a comedy plays known as new comedy so he started out there out a a uh, new form of comedy and uh, it was termed as new comedy so that previous plays became known as old comedy so after the arrival of menander uh, you find uh, two uh, different types of comedies he introduced a young romantic lead to plays which became along with several other stock types such as a cook and a cunning slave a popular staple character so he introduced a romantic uh, hero to the place uh, otherwise they used have a, a, a cook and also a very cunning slave in the uh, i mean in the comedy but here he is introducing a uh, romantic hero to the play new comedy also saw more plot twists suspense and treatment of common people and their daily problems so you find uh, uh, comedy is gradually evolving and uh, you have find some kind of twist and all that suspense and also the uh, topics or uh, subjects related to common men were also found uh, in the comedy new plays were continuously being written and performed and with the formation of actors guilds in the 3rd century bc and the mobility of professional troops greek theatre continued to spread across the mediterranean with the theatres becoming a common feature of the urban landscape from magna graecia to asia minor so here gradually you find uh, this uh, uh, place where this tragedy or comedy they are spreading from greece to other areas uh, like the mediterranean uh, that is uh, from magna graecia that means the coastal areas of southern italy where you find a uh, lot of people uh, from greece the greek settlers were there and to asia minor that is uh, including greece kurdistan assyria and armenia so this shows the spread of a uh, uh, the greek theater to other areas of the world in the roman world plays were translated and imitated in latin 
and the genre gave rise to a new art form from the 1st century BC pantomime so from the greek world it is spreading to the roman uh, empire and of course the language was uh, latin so from uh, greek now they are translating into uh, latin all this place and then in the first century bc we saw uh, we see a new form of uh, uh, play coming that is uh, pantomime i mean today we have got the mime which drew inspiration from the presentation and subject matter of greek tragedy so another outcome of uh, greek tragedy is uh, pantomime or mime and uh, we know that uh, mime they use a lot of uh, uh, face painting that is almost like the mask uh, the idea behind this painting is uh, not to show their real face that is exactly the role of a mask theater was now firmly established as a popular form of entertainment and it would endure right up to the present day so there is no stopping the uh, growth of uh, drama it is spreading to other parts of the world and it has become a very popular form of entertainment just like uh, films or movies today even the original 5th century bc plays have continued to inspire modern theater audiences with a timeless examination of universal themes as they are regularly reperformed around the world sometimes as it uh, epidorus in the original theaters of ancient greece so uh, i find that uh, even the 5th century plays continue to inspire uh, the modern theater audiences and uh, they were reperformed that means performed over and over again around the world Uh, here you can have a look at the uh, epidorus theater in greece it's an aerial view of that uh, uh, amphitheater you can just see how the whole structure is built i think with that we have come to the end of uh, greek theater thank you have a nice day